Alright everybody, this is Nash here, and today we're going to be talking some Texas Longhorns football, and specifically we're going to be talking about the Texas Longhorns defense. Now we're coming off a loss to Alabama, a one point loss. We had both quarterbacks out, or well we had our starting quarterback out, our second string quarterback probably should have been out, but he was playing on one leg. And we, it looks like we don't have our third string quarterback, and that's why he was having to play on one leg. So there's a good chance that we could be starting our fourth string quarterback this week. Yikes. But it's not what we're here to talk about. But this defense kept us in that Alabama game. And we're going to be looking at some of these great things that this defense has shown us so far this year versus what has been a consensus opinion of the toughest opponent that could – lay on anybody's schedule this year. Now, of warning, we are going to be looking at some 2021 rush defense and pass rush stats. So I apologize for any bad feelings that are being brought up in this video. But nevertheless, there's some good feelings that are, that's why we're bringing up those bad feelings, bad memories. Let's get into the video. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below on what you think of the Texas Longhorns defense improving in 2022. Alright, let's get into it. So I guess a good place to start off would be the Texas rush defense. And I said I was going to bring up some bad memories. So here we go. We're going to start off with a little bit of good memories. We had yards at, we're going to be looking at the yards after contact. And on some of these we're going to be looking at the yards after contact per attempt. Because I think some of these games, it's worth looking at. So in 2021, the Texas Longhorns played 12 games. And in those 12 games, we only had three games where we held opponents to under 100 yards after contact in the rushing department. That was Louisiana Raging Cajuns with 44 yards after contact. Rice with 83 yards after contact. Texas Tech with 85 yards after contact. The games that exceeded 100 yards after contact starts off bad. Arkansas, 239 yards after contact. 5.2 yards after contact per attempt. And a little spoiler, in 2020, or in 2021 last year, we allowed 5.2 yards per rush. So they got that after we touched them. Not good. TCU, 153 yards after contact, 4.37 yards per attempt. Oklahoma, 275 yards after contact, 7.64 yards after contact per attempt. Oklahoma State, 118 yards after contact. Baylor, 138 yards after contact. Iowa State, 136 yards after contact. Kansas, 128 yards after contact. West Virginia, 111 yards after contact. Kansas State, 116 yards after contact. And if you watch the every play video that I did for the rush defense, you already, you know that's, you, you knew that already. But, over 200 yards per game on average last year. That was an increase of 60 yards from the 2020 numbers. Where, yes, it was a shortened season, but still 140 yards per game is a huge difference. And so far in, 100, in, in 2022, it's been 126 yards per game in the two games that we played. So there is an increase. But what, are the, what about the yards after contact? I mean, that's why, that's why I mentioned that stuff, obviously. 90 yards after contact versus ULM. But it's kind of deceiving because their yards after contact, it's there's a ton of guys that carry the football versus ULM for tech or versus Texas for ULM. And the yards after contact, it's a bunch of single guys that so there was no there was no one guy that really had a ton of yards after contact. But their total rushing yards was a hunt was 116 rushing yards, so most of their yardage came after contact. But like I said, it was few and far between with most of the guys. I mean, you look at their top two rushers were 
Chandler Rogers, who's a quarterback, 32 yards. Moten, 28 yards of his was after contact. And Zach Martin, who, honestly, he produced the most yards that didn't come after contact. 39 and 13 of those came after contact. But you look at like a guy like Andrew Henry, who had 17 yards and 25 of them came after contact. That means we're contacting him in the back backfield, which I'm going to go ahead and assume is he was in on the play where Jalen Ford missed the tackle. But also on missed tackles, that stuff got, I mean, that got tightened up. Now, yes, there was the Ryan Watts missed tackle at the end. Huge sack if he finishes that tackle. But for the most part, we did not see a ton of missed tackles. And missed tackles can kind of almost get subjective because when you start looking at all the different stat sites, they're different. But, I mean, they're sitting, we're sitting right in the 5-7 to seven missed tackle range versus Alabama. And I'd be willing to bet most of those are with the guy that they call uh, Houdini. But you look at Alabama, 57 yards after contact, only 57. 3.35 per attempt, but most of that was Bryce Young. Because if you look at the running backs, if you single out, if you get rid of Bryce Young's rushing, the running backs, 25 yards after contact. And honestly, that most of the rushing for Bryce Young came on that one big play at the end. But 25 yards after contact, 1.67 yards per attempt. So our guys outside of, and that run didn't even really have any contact or count for contact. So it doesn't count against it. But outside of that one run where they ran 81 yards down the field, which was over half of their rushing production as a team, so when you look at their rushing, including that one run, now and I all the time I argue about how you need to include these big runs because it's a big part of the rushing game. You know they develop rhythm, but this one this one was kind of a freak one where we just missed a tackle on it. It was the first play of the drive and boom, and this was not a big scoring game. This was a very this was a defensive battle, which is kind of almost a shock to even think about. Like like I in my no one would have thought this was going to happen. I mean, if you thought Texas won the game, you thought it was because Quinn Ewers went out there and just slung the ball. B. John Robinson went crazy, and it was just this slugger fest where it was just back and forth, back and forth. You've never said, oh, yeah, no, the Texas defense is going to go toe-to-toe with the Alabama defense. You wouldn't have. But 6.7 yards after uh, yards per attempt – just in general with the 161 rushing yards, you take away the 81 rushing yard uh, play, 80 rushes for 23 attempts, that's 3.47 per attempt. That's a respectable attempt for a run defense right there. And it will be very interesting to see how they progress moving through the year. Because, I mean, at, at the beginning of the year, it was kind of very similar. But at the same time, right Louisiana uh, Raging Cajuns, University of Louisiana. Well, and they had a good year. You know, we were their only loss. So I don't want to call them a bad team. But Rice, Texas Tech, these were all weaker opponents when you think of Arkansas, OU, Oklahoma State, Baylor. And then even uh, Iowa State, who had uh, Brees Hall, who's an NFL running back now. But we went up against some pretty good ones this last Saturday. And the Texas defense showed us something encouraging. So let's move on to the second thing that I think that they showed that was encouraging, which was the pass rush. And this is something that has been long missed. Now, there's a chance that you might have seen this uh, chart that I'm showing right here. And it shows the defensive pressures. And I, I I am slightly skeptical of how this chart is tracked. But this is the official numbers from the University of Texas website, CFB Stats. They get their numbers from CFBStats.com. Uh, CFB so that's where all these numbers are coming from. And these numbers, so this is what t- this is what the University of Texas puts on their media guides. And I mean, it is just it, it's it's a it's a slap in the face, is what it is of reality. 
is these pillars. You see the, you see the 2005, 2009, the years that we competed for national championships. And really, these other years, we were competing for net. We had, like, you know, we were, especially 2008, great year of pressures. But it has just been a steady decline. And we've almost reached, uh, not almost reached, uh, we, we have reached a pitfall. I mean, <laughs> like 2020, this, uh, 2020 and 2016, have 15 and 17 pressures each. And that's an entire season. That's under... Two pressures per game. And like I said, I'm, I'm skeptical of what they're counting a pressure, but still, even to get that low, I mean, that is just, it's shocking, quite to be, to be quite honest, when you're talking about the University of Texas. But so here's a chart that I have of showing the pressures that they labeled for each individual game. And you can see there wasn't really a shoot-up in any one game that was really big outside of Oklahoma. And I only have these labeled as weeks, but week six to week seven, that's Oklahoma. Pardon me, that's Oklahoma State. But there were six pressures in that game. And that was our largest in 2022, or 2021. But we've already exceeded that last game. This last game against Alabama, we had seven pressures. We're currently on pace to finish... With twi- now, again, with the Jatavian Sanders, and he saw major regression in the second game versus Alabama. But, I mean, early on, it actually looked pretty good for him with uh, Quinn Ewers until Quinn Ewers got knocked out. So, kind of put a pin in that one. But we're currently on pace to finish with 48 pressures on the year, which is twice the amount of pressures that we had last year. And, I mean, this defense has improved a lot on the pass rush. There is a there is a push. You're constantly you're, – you're seeing the defense, like, actually either force the quarterback to throw the ball or force the quarterback to move to be able to throw the ball. Now, we just went up against a guy that they call Houdini, and rightfully so. But I think we could have had – I think there's a chance that last game, if that was any – most most quarterbacks are not going to be Bryce Young back there. I think most quarterbacks, if we had seen a defensive effort like that versus most of any other quarterback that we could put out there on the field, we would have seen more multi-sack game. I don't think – yeah, we didn't have a single multi-sack game last year from a single person. I think there's a chance that we probably could have seen multiple people have a multi-set game. Now, I will be interested to see if our defense can get up to that level because, I mean, you look at the factors. You had a packed stadium. I mean, nobody – it's it's one of these games where uh, the bulletin board material left and right. No, Even even your own fans, uh, sports right, every, you name it, you pick it. Alabama's going to win. And to be quite honest with you, if you said Texas was going to win, you were probably a, just a, a like a diehard Texas fan that was looking through burn orange shaded glasses. So it'll be very it, it'll be very interesting to see if they can keep on keep on producing like this. If they can keep on getting up for games like they did for Alabama. Because at the reality, that's that's what these good teams do. Week in and week out, they play the same way regardless of the opponent. And we're going to need to rely on them very heavily for this UTSA game. Because, as I said before, looks like we're rolling out there with the Charles Wright quarterback. Now, I mean, Charles Wright, I'm not trying to... You know, rag on the guy, but I'm just like it's a it's a it is a reality. He is our fourth string quarterback, and we have to play conservatively with him. At at the not even even if he's good, like even if he's the the dude out there, you still got to be conservative because who you got who, who it's Roshan Johnson is the next option. So this Texas defense has shown improvement through the first two games of the season. Let's see if they can keep it up and keep it moving. 
And let's uh, let's head into some conference play here after UTSA. And l let's have let's have a good season here. All right. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, remember drop that like button. Uh, comment down below. Who are you most excited to see with improvement on the defense? I think for me, mine would probably have to be Jalen Ford. The way he bounced back from having a first game with just a ton of missed tackles. I mean, and I was I was talking with uh, some people before the game. You know, I like I'd rather yes, Jalen Ford is missing those tackles, but I'd ra I'd rather take a guy who's going to be who's able to be in the position and he may or may not make the play as opposed to the guy who literally cannot be in the right position but might be able to make the play. Let's just get let's get the other guy. Let's get the guy who's able to get in the right position. Let's get that guy up to speed and let's get him making plays. And that's what he did on Saturday versus Alabama. I'm excited to see if he can keep it up and excited to see if this Texas team can keep this stuff up because they're looking good right now. All right, everybody. Peace out. Hook